Why is it that everyone always defends the sins that they commit? The guy who smokes tells you it's not haram, it's makruh. The guy who intermingles with women all the time will tell you, well, the hearts are pure, there's nothing wrong with it. The guy who buys the house with riba tells you, well, in our day and age, we need to engage in riba in order to. Why is that? <laughs>
Don't, you know, uh, you deny that it'll happen to you. Smokers are famous for this. Yeah, I had my uncle so and so, he died at age 93 and he used to smoke two packs a day until he died and he was in good health. So I deny that it's going to happen to me. All right? That's another way. Um, another way is you criticize the item to yourself. Do you remember the story of the fox and the grapes? The story is about the fox and he found a bunch of grapes way up in the tree and they looked really good and he tried so hard and he couldn't get them. So when he couldn't get them, what did he say to himself as he walked away? He said they were probably sour grapes anyways. So when he says they were sour, he doesn't feel that bad that he couldn't get them. Again, this is cognitive dissonance. Versus if he walked away thinking, oh, those juicy, sweet, sweet grapes, he's going to be hurt all the time. I wish I could have gotten them. But no, you know what? They were probably sour. Cognitive dissonance. Wonderful. So now you understand why people behave in such a way, defend their sins and try to argue. Even the, the arguments are weak, but they're trying to make themselves feel comfortable. So what does this have to do with da'wah? One of uh, the rules we say, everything has something to do with da'wah as long as you're in da'wah mode. If you're in the frame of mind of thinking of da'wah benefits, you will find da'wah benefits in marketing classes. Take a PR course and you'll find da'wah benefit. Take a sales class, you're going to find da'wah benefit as long as you're in da'wah mode. So what does cognitive dissonance have to do with da'wah? Look at this example. Suppose there are two brothers who hate each other. Let's make it easy. Brother Hassan with an H hates with an H. Brother Ali. Brother Hassan hates Brother Ali. Now, as a third party, I want those two brothers to love each other. Now, I know what you're thinking. Go tell Brother Ali, who doesn't hate the other, go tell Brother Ali to buy a gift and give it to Hassan, right? Actually, it's the opposite. Tell Brother Hassan, who doesn't like Ali, convince him to buy him a gift. What's going to happen? It's cognitive dissonance in action. He's going to go to the mall and he's going to start looking around for what is a, a good and reasonable gift to give Brother Ali. He's going to look, should I get him this one? No, it's not good. Will Ali like that? And then he's going to tell himself internally, why do I care if Ali will like it or not? So why am I doing something, that, this action, going, that goes against my belief? I don't like Brother Ali, so why do I care? Why am I shopping for him and all that? So what's going to happen to remove this dissonance? Of course, there is a possibility that he is going to change the action and not buy him anything. But he already committed to it. You convinced him. So he is going to now change his opinion of Brother Ali. He's going to tell himself, you know why I'm putting all this energy into Brother Ali? Because I like Brother Ali. He's all right. He's actually going to convince himself to like this man. This is something that's also known as the Franklin effect. Because Benjamin Franklin, there was, uh, there was somebody, a politician who used to dislike him a lot. And Benjamin Franklin knew that. So he wanted to fix the relationships between them. He learned that this man had a very rare book in his library collection. So one day he sent him a note asking him for that book. And the man quickly obliged and sent him the, the book, which was rare and everything, sent him that book. And because he did that, why would I give him my rare book? I must like him. He convinced himself that he liked Benjamin Franklin. Now imagine in our Ali and Hassan example, you can convince both of them to exchange gifts. Then you would have gotten the best of both worlds. And guess what? Your Prophet وسلم, already gave you the same advice. And he said, Tahadu tahabu. Tahadu shows you both sides are exchanging gifts. It will cause you to love one another. Just like the Prophet وسلم, said. There are many studies that have been conducted that show the effects of cognitive dissonance and they involve having people do extremely boring jobs and paying them very little for it. The ones that would, were paid very little were at the end when they were interviewed, they enjoyed the job. Well, really, they convinced themselves that they enjoyed the job far more than those who were paid more than them. Those who were paid more, okay, they understood why they were doing the job, they're just getting paid for it. But these guys are getting pennies. Why are they doing it? they start to convince themselves that they love it. And so you'll see this in many different aspects of life. For example, hazing. You know, when groups, you know, they haze, they make you do something that you normally wouldn't do. When you do that action, you convince yourself that I w I'm doing this because I'm convinced, because I really believe in being a part of this group or this fraternity or what have you. So there's a lot of that psychology involved in that as well. Now you understand why when someone has a, a specific sin that they commit, they defend it so much to the point where they might even go and start to challenge the evidence, the hadith or whatever it is, or the understanding of the ayah 
because they're trying to make themselves comfortable. No, I'm not committing a sin by sitting with these girls. The hearts are pure. As long as the hearts are pure, you're okay. Or some people will tell you, I don't pray, but my heart is good. I don't need to pray. Well, the Prophet ﷺ had the best heart and he still prayed. And plus there's no such thing. But he's just trying to make himself feel better. But to say that I don't pray and my heart is good, it's like saying, I never brush my teeth, but my mouth is clean. So I hope you now have an understanding of how the human mind works a little bit more as a da'iyah. And we ask Allah to give you tawfiq. Sallallahu wa baraka ala Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.